will start to show up. Hello, folks. I'm John Mullen, and this is my colleague. Hi, I'm Laura Short, the Queen of Green at Heart. Yes, and we're here on the Evangelist Talks today. And slightly differently, we're actually broadcasting live on LinkedIn today, uh, just for a difference and see what the results are. So, what are we talking about today? Uh, we are talking about, it's the Christmas cycle. So, we're talking about downtime and actually having time to look forward as well uh, in your business. So, go on, Laura. Yeah, I think it's a really important time of year. Like you say, it's a, it's a very reflective time anyway. Um, and being reflective about the way that you've run your business over the last 12 months and then your intentions for the next 12, 24, you know, 48 months, it's really important to get those plans in place so that you can actually hit January and hit the ground running. Yes, but actually realise that for some people, Christmas will be their biggest and busiest time of year as well. So even if you're not in the cycle of other people, you still need downtime. You still need to be able to say, okay, how am I going forward? Don't just keep on doing the same as you've always done. Yeah. Otherwise, you never progress forward. So it's it's having the time to step back is so important for every business to help you to grow and it's actually really well i find it a really enjoyable time <laughs> what do you think you do do you enjoy yeah, doing I do, it I do, I do love christmas um but i also love that kind of build up to the new year new changes new challenges um and kind of moving forward as well i don't yeah. love the However, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, period. Yeah. Uh, it, yes, it's it's that time of year as well. It's the time for colds and flus. <coughs> Sorry, LinkedIn. <laughs> if we weren't doing this live, we would say, okay, let's start again. <laughs> There's no do overs though in life, is there? You've only got one shot at it, so you may as well just go for it and make the best you can. Exactly. No, no, that's uh, the best way forward. So, what sort of businesses do you? Th uh, I'm thinking there's so many service industries which are have this cycle of downtime at Christmas. It, it, it may be that they're working flat out until Christmas Eve, and then all of a sudden they switch off. Uh, or if you're on retail, you are just working whatever hours God sends, and you just can't you can't get enough into the day. So yeah, it can be. I mean, it's such a busy time of year for them. But that's why I think it's even more important to to have your plans already in place so that when you get to this time of year, you know that you can operate as efficiently as possible, even in this ramped up state. And then when you hit maybe a, a downtime period in January, you can then, you know, gather the troops and, and kind of move forward after that. Um, but having those pre-prepared plans and having that business intelligence throughout the year, like we keep talking about, gathering that information about your business means that when you hit these busy periods you're not just in panic mode you're expecting it you're anticipating you know the additional usages within your business or additional staff costs that you might need and you're able to plan for those in advance yeah i used to work in the it industry and Nobody wanted to see you the week before Christmas or over the new year unless they had an emergency. So it was also planning and scheduling engineers who, you know, spreading out the loads across the, the whole set of us as a, as a team uh, so that nobody got 
slaughtered, or well, I'll, I'll use a different word, nobody got hammered with all of the, the pressure to actually look after a client whenever you know they actually wanted to be with the uh, with their family over the holiday periods. Uh, but it was also the same during August. Everybody wanted to go on holiday, apart from the schools. The schools wanted everything done over August. So sometimes it was really quiet. Other times you couldn't keep up with the demand. It just depended what the needs were. But it's recognizing the cycles <laughs> which happen every single year in your industry. If you don't recognize it, you'll hit, say, a holiday period for other people and you'll get really frustrated. And in the middle of that frustration, you actually do nothing to progress your own business. Yeah. So it's... It, it, it's recognizing what is the norm for you. You may not recognize it in your first year, maybe even two years of business if you're a startup, but it is this recognition that over time you'll go, oh, I need to make changes. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, making our planning as well yeah i mean i think that for me it should be part of your environmental management system anyway or what other management system you're using for your business but at least just having a sit down and a team talk about how you're going to approach the festive season what what things are you going to put in place so that your business is resilient to that added pressure um because the last thing you want is to have to constantly be reactive to things that happen over this this festive period whether that's a burst pipe or whether it's you know having to have the heating on uh, at additional times when you wouldn't normally expect to because it's so cold there's all sorts of things that can can go wrong at this time of year and it's about anticipating what might come up having a plan for it and being prepared for any additional costs yeah it's it's this whole thing about emergencies uh some people will walk out, flick the off switch and walk away. Yeah. That's their business style. Uh, other people will need somebody to check out the building. There, there's businesses I know in the middle of the Lake District and honestly, once it get hit, gets hit by uh, bad weather, oh, the, the place is frozen solid there's no way in there's no way out uh one of my business colleagues she actually has a house which she lives in most of the year in uh the lake district on the rest of the year and uh, whenever it's really cold bad storms she actually goes down south <laughs> it's okay. nice to have these options <laughs> yeah. maybe brain. we should yeah, maybe we should do that, you know, go go to France for, you know, the holidays. Why not? We'll <laughs> Different have to get miles, though. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 you know, maybe it should be Jersey, you know, get the best of both worlds. <laughs> okay. But this thing about planning for looking at it from an energy perspective sometimes you will need to leave systems running. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's just knowing what those systems are that have to be left on. And that's where I always come back to my colour coding. I, I just think it's the easiest way for everyone to understand what things can actually be powered off, what you need to leave on, and then what can go off intermittently um, when you don't need it. And it's just colours universal. You know, everybody's going to understand what those those colours mean, and then it's easy to communicate that within your business. Yes, yes. I'll tell you a bit of a story. Uh, one time, or whenever I was young, I actually did my electrical apprenticeship. So I was working as a commercial uh, electrician. We were working on a big uh, 
uh, manufacturing site beside uh, Belfast Airport. And we were sorting out in one of the sheds a, a supply for a new bit of equipment. There was didn't seem to be anything else connected or very little connected to that piece of equipment, just one or two other pieces and they disappeared, but there was nobody in the vicinity. So whenever we went to connect it in, we got the cables in and then went, there's nobody else here. Okay, we'll switch off. Switched off, connecting in the cables and within 60 seconds, we had the airport security detail on top of us because we had just switched off the radar for the airport next door. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, nothing marked on the switch box, not, no protection, no locks, no nothing. And they knew exactly where the problem was and they were already on us in 60 seconds. It was amazing. For some reason, they then decided, oh, I think we need to put a cage around this. So yeah. that was my one for, for Christmas, turning off the Christmas lights <laughs> whenever everybody goes out. So. Oh, absolutely. And a great case for labelling things up. Oh, yes, yes. Maybe if we'd had one of your red stickers yeah. on that. Switch. Yeah, airport radar, do not touch. <laughs> but, uh, well, uh, I think that's one for us for the December. So we will see you for, you know, over the next few weeks. But uh, shall we say it'll be a bit more relaxed mm -hmm. <laughs> over the next few weeks. Uh, so, bye from me. Bye. And we'll see you soon. Bye.